All right, today our top 20 fails using my favorite calcium and alkalinity solution, Kalkwasser. We've failed a lot here, uh, so you can learn from all of our mistakes so you don't have to experience them yourself, starting with something that I used to recommend a lot, yes. and I won't anymore. This is a surprise to everybody who's listening to this. The mistake is using Kalkwasser in your ATO auto top off. The, uh, shocking to hear that, but there's better uh, there's better applications and reasons why you wouldn't put it in your ATO. Three of them, uh, three specifically. What are they? Yeah. So first one is it's really inaccurate. It's yes. all related to how much you're going to evaporate. evaporate. Yeah. It's also really reliant on a like piece of equipment that kind of fails a lot. Being an ATO, <laughs> yeah. so you can overdose is a real frequent, and you're burning through pumps but really mm. it's the accuracy piece that yeah. I think a lot of people are gonna run into. So there are a lot better ways to do it and you're gonna hear about them all today, but I'm not gonna recommend using Kelkwasser in the ATO anymore. All right, so number two here hits on that accuracy piece mm. and why it's probably just a lot better way to do it. Yeah, so the, the mistake here is missing the value of dosers to dose your Kalkwasser instead of like your ATO. So you actually have a measured metered amount. I know how much is going in my tank. I can adjust the dose as necessary all kinds of benefits. Yeah, so I can just go ahead and mix up my uh, concentration of Kalkwasser and fresh water in a bin and then dose mm. a specific amount of that every day. And it's just like two part now, except for it's one part. <laughs> uh, it is not as concentrated, so you'll have a larger container, but here's one of the biggest benefits. Yes. Actually, you can have a really small ATO container now because you actually topped off most of it using this controlled amount. Mm. So biggest benefit though over that ATO solution, and when you just use a doser and say, I want to dose uh, 1,500 milliliters a day yeah. of uh, Kalkwasser, is it's a controlled concentration going into the tank. So I actually have this at home and yep. I'm dosing four liters of uh, Kalkwasser into my 360 gallon tank. And I now know when I find the right dose of it, that it's going to be stable and why just getting a really inexpensive dosing pump is the solution to making sure that Kalkwasser not only adds a calcium and alkalinity and managed pH all in one solution, but it does it safely and stably as well. All right, number three, I'm a gear junkie, so I have one of these, but I'm not sure I need it. <laughs> yeah, the mistake here is uh, using a stirrer when actually a container will do. So you may think like there's this progression. Uh, for me, when I thought of Calquas, there's this progression. Use it in the ATO, use a container and dose out of, and then get to the big behemoth uh, stirrer. But, you know, most of you guys could probably get this done with like a little five gallon, 10 gallon uh, tank, and then just dose the solution right out of it without the expensive or, you know, extra gear that you have to maintain. Yeah, so here's the difference, is if I had a container and I just mix my like tea two, two teaspoons per mm -hmm. gallon of water in a container and mm -hmm. I put a decent lid on it, I've now created a controlled dose of a Kalkwasser and I can just dose it as needed. Saturation stays yeah. about the same till yeah. you're done. Yeah. Pretty, pretty close. And so here's the thing is uh, if I have space for a container, like I have a fish room or underneath my stand, yeah. or even just like a little chest I can put next to the tank and then put those containers in there, mm -hmm. actually just mixing it up that way is way easier because all I got is a container, uh, some Coke washer, some water, and a dosing pump, and I'm done. All right. But what if I don't have that space? And that's where the stirrer actually comes in. Yeah. Is like in my tank, uh, I get a pretty tight fish room in there. And so, you know, what's easier for me is I have an auto top off box that's automatically topped off with fresh water all the time. I can actually just pump 4,000 uh, milliliters or four liters of water from there through the Kalkwasser stirrer, which actually will then just dose it to my tank. And the Kalkwasser stirrer will pump water through the bottom and it's constantly stirring. Yeah. And so that fresh water has to kind of travel all the way back up and then it goes out into the tank where it may not be perfectly saturated, but it's pretty darn close. <laughs> uh, and again, now what I have is that controlled dose with the dosing pump. Mm -hmm. I have a stable saturation mm -hmm. and a smaller form factor that takes up less space as long as you have a source of fresh water at the tank. All right, so number four is actually why I consider Kalkwasser to be an intermediate to advanced yes. solution because there are some mistakes that a beginner could make. Yeah, so the mistake is not using like a pH controller or an aquarium controller with pH monitoring to uh, monitor the automation process of Kalkwasser. I mean, this one really hit home for you in one of your tanks a long time ago. Uh, 
overdosing Kalkwasser because it is such a high spiking pH. Uh, you can catch it easier when you have control or monitoring with a pH monitor. So really the fail here is not using yeah. a pH controller of some type, either a standalone or an apex yes. or whatever it might be. You should use pH control with any automation with a Kelk Cluster because one of the best benefits of it is it will actually increase the pH of the tank, which we now know can like double the rate of coral growth and calcification and really a lot healthier for the coral as well. So all benefits, but if you overdose too much Ooh. of it, man, now it skyrockets and you were right. <laughs> I actually used Kelk Washer in my ATO a long time ago. Uh, the float switch got stuck on. It dumped 10 gallons of Kelk solution Ooh. in the tank, which uh, the pH went through the roof. Uh, luckily, I knew what to do with it, by the way, which is just pour vinegar in, get it down as fast as possible. <laughs> I lost a couple of crabs and some Xenia, everything else lived, but yeah. only because I knew what to do right away. And if I hadn't heard that gurgling of the pump yeah. uh, and been home at the time, you know what? Crash. Everything would have been dead mm -hmm. for sure by yeah. the time I noticed. So the biggest thing, whether you're using a dosing pump, an ATO, or a stir, or a bin, is whatever pump you're using on there should turn off if you break like 8.3 or 8.4. Just have it turn off, and now you are protected from the overdose. Use a pH controller. You'll have way better long-term results. All right, number five, starting with the benefits here of Kalkwasser or calcium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. uh, really starting to understand what I think it might be the best calcium and alkalinity solution out there yes. and why it's actually running on my tank at home right now. Yes, so number five, the first benefit that you're missing as a mistake is the salinity benefits that you don't have with Kalkwasser that you do have with something like two-part and raising salinity over time. A vast, vast majority of two parts based on calcium chloride and yes. sodium carbonate or bicarbonate. So the leftover of calcium chloride is chloride and leftover of sodium bicarbonate is sodium. Sodium chloride. Salt. salt. <laughs> yeah, and so it's like adding a couple cups of salt every month to your tank and eventually the salinity will yes. go up. Great solution. You got to do some water changes to get back down. But here's the thing. With calcium hydroxide, you don't have that problem. Yes. Calcium goes in, it's calcium. Uh, the hydroxide goes in, reacts with the carbon dioxide in your tank, and creates carbon and alkalinity. Done. Boom. Done. No nothing, leftovers. Nothing left over. Yeah. yeah. So it's a solution that actually maintains calcium and alkalinity in a single additive without any of the salinity issues. All right, number six. You heard the carbon dioxide component yes. of the previous benefit comes up again. Yeah. So number six benefit that you're missing is the pH benefits. Now there. there we all know that Kyle Kosser raises pH uh, and it's really good at it, but it's that carbon dioxide component as to why it does that and why this might be better than your two-part calcium reactor. So I think really the big fail here is that we've all believed you can have a tank anywhere between 7.8 and 8.3. And be, it's true. Be okay. Things will survive. Right. But we now know that if I get closer to 8.3, everything actually starts to grow twice as fast, mm. and we have fewer mortalities, and the acidification of the ocean, and every major research <laughs> paper known to man agrees with that. Yeah. Let's accept it, we can do better. So, uh, this is one of the best solutions to raise the pH because of what you just said, yes. is when that hydroxide hits the water, it pulls the carbon dioxide out of water, which means no more carbonic acid in the water, or at least way less, yes. pH goes up, solution. So one of the biggest benefits is that Kelk Wasser actually will raise the pH of the tank and help you grow your corals faster. All right, so number seven, normally the best options out there cost the most. Yes, and not in this case. So do not miss the cost benefit of Kelk Wasser over, you know, your extravagant calcium reactor or even two-part to some degree. Uh, because the secret is caulk washer is cheap. Yeah, it is one of the least expensive ways to maintain calcium and alkalinity in yes. the tank. It can be as cheap as some DIY methods with pickling lime. This stuff will have uh, like uh, some impurities. It's food grade, but it'll have things that really don't matter to food, like silica and some aluminum and right. stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, which is okay because it will settle out, but you should never ever dose the stuff on the bottom. <laughs> 
But in reality, most of us are using, you know, aquarium, in this case, pharmaceutical grade or the BRS Pharma. This material not only will be, have a tiny, tiny fraction of the impurities in it because it's pharmaceutical grade. Yes. It's actually processed different. So instead of getting that normal kelk or like poof in your face, uh, this <laughs> stuff actually is free flowing powder and just a lot, lot easier to use. And so it's super cheap too. Cents, cents more expensive, like per month. If you can spare a couple of dimes a month, uh, you can actually use this quality material yes. in your reef tank and have the best and the cheapest at the same time. All right, number eight. I think this one's going to speak to a lot of people. Yes, and the mistake is missing just how easy Kalkwasser is. Think about a calcium reactor. Far easier than that. Two-part, even easier than that. Because specifically for me, because I don't have to worry about what times I'm dosing my uh, calcium and my alkalinity so they don't precipitate. I don't have to make sure that they're separated so they're not mixing together. And uh, I only have one pump for the Kalkwasser. Yeah, it's just not as careful about the super high flow. Still, sh any chemical should be done in a high flow right. area, but you're not worried about the, like, the poof that's happening. You're not worrying about two pumps now instead of just one. Yeah. I only got one liquid. It's just a little bit of powder mixed in with fresh water, and I'm done. Yes, So easy. ease of ease of use. The only added piece, I guess, is the thing that we added before is you should always have that pH controller. But honestly, you should have that on your alkalinity you doser as well. So in any case, probably easier than all of them and just a really, really neat solution. All right, number nine, you often think of Kalkwasser not as associated with the pro level reefers, yeah. but that's just wrong. Yeah, so the mistake is overlooking the fact that even pros like the crew at WWC, Vic and Lou and the team actually would prefer Kalkwasser over all others. Yeah, we actually called it Vic's pick. Uh, uh, Kalkwasser is his favorite solution for all the reasons we just described yeah. for calcium and alkalinity at Worldwide Corals. Pros. Uh, and, you know, they have such high coral density, they also add on calcium reactors, but it's usually a conjunction with let's take it as far as we can with the Kalkwasser and then, if needed, add something else on top of yeah. it. That was the exact same thing. So I think those guys are my mentors, but my original mentor for helping get my first tank up and going, same thing. David Greger, who served a mentor to almost everybody in Minneapolis yeah. that I know of, <laughs> uh, has actually done tanks, big flow, full blown SPS tanks, just Kalkwasser, and has trained that to me many, many years ago. So our mentors, the pros out there, going with Kalkwasser as well. Number 10, the biggest fallacy about <laughs> Kalkwasser out there. Yes, and I've made this mistake, so don't make the same one in thinking that Kalkwasser will only take you so far. Like I hear on the forums, Kalkwasser is only for like softies with maybe a few LPS and it can't handle a full blown SPS dominated system. Those are just wrong. This Kalk Kalkwasser can actually take you pretty dang far. Uh, way, way farther. I, people get lost in the word like uh, like a you know intermediate or mixed uh, reef or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And it really depends on how much you're evaporating in a day. But most people be really surprised. And you're going to get to actually see in this case because I'm taking my tank at home as far as I can take it with Kalkwasser. And so you get to see exactly what the type of tank yeah. that can be supported on this. Uh, you, if you want to, you can actually go follow me on BRS TV Guy on Facebook or Instagram. But yeah. You can actually do really advanced tanks, Kalkwasser only. It's not just for low demand tanks. At right, number 11, I admittedly used this on my tank in the beginning. Yep, me too. And we're gonna call it a mistake now, and that is using that food grade uh, pickling lime or Kalkwasser calcium hydroxide. Uh, there's just far better options out there without the impurities. We've proved it in, uh, ICP MS testing and an investigates that we did. Um, but for cents a month, you can just do better. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for me, the big thing was that, you know, in theory, when you mix all this up with the water, it's such high pH that the aluminum and all the other stuff settles at the bottom. Mm. And I think that's probably true. But in reality, after using it for many years, there are always times where the bottom gets stirred oh, yeah. up or something oh, yeah. happens. And then I end up some. dosing that concentrated stuff to my yeah. tank. I don't really know what it does. I don't care because for, you know, 20, 30, 40 cents an extra a month, I can actually use a solution that doesn't have that at all to begin with. So, yeah, I don't know. 
you know, if you're really trying to do reef tank on an ultra, ultra, ultra low bud budget, this worked because it worked for me. Yes. But I think most people probably best served with just knowing that none of that stuff is in there to begin with. Number 12, super closely related to that. <laughs> yeah, so I've made this mistake again, and there's all kinds of solutions around it, but the mistake is sucking up that sludge at the bottom. It doesn't matter how much you, you know, mix or stir or whatever, what have you, there's gonna be sludge at the bottom. Just don't run that through your dosing pump line and just don't run that through your ATO if you're gonna put it, if you choose to use that option, just don't want that stuff in there, it has no benefit. Yeah, so what will happen again is some of it will precipitate or you'll get, uh, you know, the impurities that settle out at the bottom. Mm. A couple of ways that I've solved that is like put uh, the, the dosing pump or even my, well, don't use your ATO, but if I did <laughs> it, uh, with my uh, Tunes Oscillator, I would put it in a little shallow cup. So I guess it would suck up a little bit that settled out in that little cup. But what would happen is it would never go below a certain level yeah. and never suck all of the sludge and sediment mm. out of the rest of the tank. Now, that's not to say that that never wiggled its way out of there or anything else, but like make sure to put some effort in regardless of the mm. quality that you use. You just don't want to suck that stuff up because not only it's just impurities, but it will see, you'll see the pH of the tank just skyrocket when that stuff goes in as well. Now, I've even heard of people like mixing up the caulk washer to max saturation and then just siphoning off the top of the water mm -hmm. to that and leaving the sludge at the bottom. You know, that's absolutely an option. You could let it all settle out, take the clear water and, and uh, take it off. You know, that's probably the you know, best practice method. Yeah, I've never done that before. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just put a little effort into making sure that wherever it's settling out, you're not sucking a ton of that and putting it into the tank. Yep. All right, number 13, two seconds of mixing Maybe not enough. Yeah, so don't make the mistake of not mixing it long enough. We'll tell you here in a second just how to do that correctly or the best way to kind of get there. But yeah, you know, a couple stirs isn't going to do it. Yeah, I don't know. You know, that's the way I used to do it is I'd give it one little quick stir and assume it all dissolved perfectly. Mm. Uh, it certainly did enough uh, to maintain my tank. But if you really will want to get like max saturation and most of it dissolved in the water, you know, you're probably going to give it a pretty good stir and really get it going in there mm. uh, and make sure that you get enough time for a contact for it to dissolve or, you know, get into the water. Number 14, I know a lot of people who have done this one wrong. Yeah, so the mistake is the opposite end of that and mixing it too long. There is a point of diminishing returns here where if I don't mix it long enough, it doesn't get uh, concentrated. If I mix it too long, it starts to lose concentration. There's an in-between point, but too long, still not good. It's not an exact science here. Like uh, you're not gonna like, oh man, I mixed it for 14 seconds too long. <laughs> yeah. uh, what a lot of times what people will do is throw like a mixing pump in there and like let it mix for the next couple of hours. Yeah. And all you did there was make yeah. sure you got lots of carbon dioxide from the water into the water bin and depleted your calcium hydroxide. Mm. Uh, and so you don't wanna do that. So give it a good mix, but like don't throw a pump in there and really go to town or worse yet, don't leave the pump running all the, all the time, time because not only will you down be mixing like this uh, slurry that's super duper high pH, <laughs> but it's probably depleted as well. All right, number 15, a lot of us like to do this perfect and we chase all the little nerdy things that we've been told, but in this case, probably not the greatest idea. Yeah, so the mistake here is chasing that max saturation. You hear it all over the place, like, that ah, should be two teaspoons of max saturation. Do I mix short? Do I miss, mix long? Did I pass it? Did I go, if I'm not there yet, what is max saturation? Uh, it's just a dragon not to chase. Okay, so for the most part, put two teaspoons of, uh, of Kalkwasser into a gallon of water or per gallon of water yep. and call it a day. Uh, you're, it's going to be as saturated as it's going to get. Mm. Now you can get a little more nerdy with it and you can actually go the other direction as well. I could just do one teaspoon per gallon half. of water and it'd be half the saturation, but why would I do that? <laughs> why wouldn't I just go make it as concentrated as I can be and then dose the right amount? Yes. In your ATO, maybe you would want to uh, adjust the concentration, but again, Mistake. now you gotta clean it every yeah. time. Yeah, just not an accurate way. So let's make it as concentrated as we can, but let's not chase that magic number. But one of the ways you're gonna know is actually with electrical conductivity. So like an EC pan like this one from Hannah mm -hmm. is how you'll know how close to the max saturation level that you're, you could possibly get. 
but don't go chasing a magic fairy tale or rainbow here. Just <laughs> use the two tablespoons, get it as strong as you can get it and leave it alone. If you're not all the way there, you're gonna be damn close and it's good enough. All right, number 16, this is probably the most overlooked tool yes. in terms of Kalkwasser and managing your tank. We just mentioned it, but I'm gonna say it again. Yes, missing the value of an electrical conductivity pen like this one from Hannah. There's a few other ones out there, but the point is I can now test and know did I, am I too short of ca uh, max saturation for my uh, mix? Am I too far? And I can just, all I have to do is dip the pen in and find out, okay, it's there. A couple minutes later, oh, it's there. And now it starts. So I find that, you know, parabola and then where that peak is. And now I can just say, that's going to be my max saturation. Honestly, I think that's too nerdy. Uh, still. <laughs> I, I just use my two teaspoons uh, and call it a day because it's going to be stable at that point. And then test it. But I want to know, really, yes. is when it's depleted. That's right? a big one. Yeah, and so an EC pen measures the electrical conductivity of the water. For those who don't know, that's what a TDS meter does too. It just like uh, uses a, like an equation to turn it back into an estimated total TDS. dissolved solvent. Yeah. By putting the kelp water in here, we created dissolved solids in the water. How about uh, that? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, and so what I'm gonna use this for at home for me is in my Kalkwasser stirrer, I wanna know when it's depleted. And there's no way for me to really know other than, well, the pH started to drop and it's no longer working, yeah. right? I'm gonna have to measure my calcium alkalinity, know that it stopped working. That's too late. Yes. I wanna actually preempt that. And so what I can do is actually just go ahead and uh, test the electrical conductivity of the water and I can know whether or not, you know, not that I'm at max, but I'm at what it is normally when I put new material mm -hmm. in there. And then four weeks from now, when it starts to uh, drop, I can add, clean it out, or I can just add some more material to it. And now I know that I'm getting consistent dose to the tank. All right, number 17, admittedly, I've never had to do this before. Yeah, so the mistake is missing the vinegar option to increase your uh, max saturation. Uh, I have attempted this before, but uh, not very clearly with a purpose. Uh, Randy Holmes Farley has his you know, Kalkwasser article with everything you wanna know, chemical reactions and how vinegar works. It's a lot of science, but if you're interested, the option is out there. Yeah, basically this gets to that point where I'm now dosing more kelp washer solution in the tank than the tank actually evaporates in a day. Yeah. Well, I can't add any more, I'm gonna eventually flood the tank, right. right? So what I can do is make the solution more potent, right? And the way I do that is adding an acid like uh, vinegar to the tank. And it's kind of got a complex reaction, it involves the bacteria and carbon dosing and what happens to the tank, but it will still add calcium and alkalinity uh, in largely equal amounts to the tank and have the pH benefits, but in a more concentrated dose. It is a little bit more complex. It does require a less than like perfect uh, dose of carb or of uh, vinegar to the kelp water. So I, if you're gonna do this, I would definitely go read Randy Holmes Farley's mm -hmm. article on it. But if you do hit the limit at some top point and your tank's just sucking up so much calcium and alkalinity, there is a way to continue the journey. All right, number 18, mm. the poof burns. <laughs> so don't make the mistake of breathing in the dust from Kalkwasser, calcium hydroxide. Some are more dusty than others, uh, specifically like this off the shelf brand does have fine powders that uh, when you dump it, kind of blows everywhere. You do not want to breathe that in. Uh, even the pharma stuff has uh, some dust, not as poofy as this one, but still do not breathe that stuff in. Yeah. So most of the kelp washer you'll run into is like talc or like you know baby mm. powder and it just mm. kind of poofs. Yeah. So no matter how you scoop it, when it like hits anything, it just kind of gets in the air and it's super, super high pH and it is not good for your lungs to breathe no. in, stick to all your sinuses, bad news. Uh, so don't breathe it in any case. I will say again, the pharma here is processed a little differently. So it's more of a free flowing powder than yep. this telky poof and re really reduces the chances that you're gonna get it into your lungs. And probably for that reason alone is why I would use this over most options. Number 19. If you're intentionally lowering your pH of your tank with a calcium reactor, there's a solution. Yes, yeah, so the mistake here is not considering Kalkwasser with your calcium reactor. It does a couple things. One, it does increase the pH or it balances out some of that pH. 
you're dosing low uh, pH effluent into your tank from the calcium reactor, the caulk washer brings some pH back up. So there's some balance there. Uh, secondly, the caulk washer is going to take the edge off of some of the calcium and alkalinity uh, consumption, meaning that your calcium reactor probably works less hard. Yeah, both those statements are true. I had a friend mm. of mine that said, I would never use a calcium reactor for the one and only reason. Everything we do in reefing is trying to raise the pH up above where it naturally wants to be in yeah. our reef tank. And now I'm going to add a piece of equipment on that would <laughs> intentionally lower it. Yeah. Uh, that's like a really interesting point or take on it. Now, not every home will have that issue, but uh, if you do, you can actually, you know, take the, the load off. Like, so two F elements. One, the calcium uh, or the kelp washer solution will raise the pH, but also it will reduce that load. If I've already replaced half of the calcium alkalinity with uh, the calcium or the kelp washer solution, now I only need to dose, dose half as much CO2 or, or effluent from the reactor as yeah. well. There was a time where I said I wouldn't do this, and mm. unless you were really an expert. And the reason for that is because you're mixing so many things together. I'm, I got this solution. I've got you know less than perfect uh, solution for my calcium reactor. The you know like a uh, like concentration of both are up and down. One of them is totally dependent on evaporation, and I'm like mixing all these things together. How am I possibly going to get <laughs> something stable? New world. So much easier. New world. Well, if I peg the pH of my calcium reactor, I know the concentration now yes. is going to be stable. So I can get a really controlled dose out of that. I'm not worried about drip rates and all that other stuff. Yep. Uh, if I also use this to max saturation and I use a dosing pump and I get a constant, uh, uh, con a consistent mm -hmm. dose out of it. Turn it up, turn it down. Now I can take two stable things and combine them into one new stable thing. Yes. Right? And actually better because I'm not lowering the pH of the tank anymore. So I understand it better now. There's different wet methods of using it that are more stable. And as we understand it and combine it together, I now know if I was using a calcium reactor, I would definitely limit its use with using Kalkwasser as well. Number 20, this might seem obvious, but it actually could catch up with you at some point and you might not know. Yeah, so the mistake here is dosing more Kalkwasser solution, then your tank is evaporating, in which case, rising levels, rising levels, rising levels, flood. Mm -hmm. So do not be, pay attention to how much is going in, what your ATO is doing, and uh, make sure you're not overdosing too much fluids into your tank or adjust the evaporation rate. Yeah. So, you know, for a good example of this, it would be is, uh, say I figured out the two gallons of solution a day was the right thing for my tank or one gallon. Uh, well, what happens uh, seasonally is uh, like the, it's either warmer, drier, yeah. or you know what, maybe my pumps, I cleaned them and uh, like uh, they're evaporating more water because they're turning it over faster or they get dirty and they're doing less. Yes. So don't ride the razor's edge of evaporation. Use your auto top off as intended. It will have to work a lot less hard, but you know, give a little bit room to make sure that you're not dosing more than you evaporate in a day and you'll never find that flood. Of course, you can use a float switch or a, a controller or something like an apex to actually just turn it off and warn you that it's happened. Mm -hmm. But I think it's easy just not to ride the edge uh, of your uh, auto top off. And the reason that you would know that you're rising the edge in this case is because you never add any auto top off water. <laughs> yeah. You should at least add some every now and then you'll know that you're right in that sweet spot and uh, you're not gonna risk any floods. All right, so if there's only one thing you heard today, let it be this. I am going to go with the shocker of the day. Don't make the mistake of using Kalkwasser in your ATO. It's just far better to have a controlled dose, uh, have a max saturation, uh, not have your ATO in control of your Kalkwasser. Better all around. I will never use it in my ATO again. In fact, the ATO thing was the thing that prevented me from recommending it to more people. Yeah. So I'm going to take the almost inverse or exact same thing of that is Dose it with a dosing pump. Yep. Uh, find either a vessel large enough that you can put near, near the tank to dose it out of there, or a freshwater container that can go through a, a, a mixer. The mixer here is only necessary to save space. Yes. You know? And don't use a reactor, by the way, that pumps it up to mix it all the time. We just want a slow stir down on the <laughs> yeah. bottom. Yeah, so that'd be my one takeaway here. 
The other piece of this actually is quality manners. You're gonna see a video pop up right here. Oh man. Uh, and you're gonna see, we actually tested like six different types of calcium hydroxide or Kelkwasser out there using ICP MS testing. Laboratory testing. Yeah, and the quality is dramatically different. So Check if it you out. wanna see how, like we did DIY methods, aquarium methods, the pharmaceutical methods, you can see the wide range of quality between all of them and you're gonna see it right here.